Artyom Dushinsky's talk, Product Design for Sustainability, How Small Decisions Make a Big Difference. Artyom wrote a fantastic article on this very subject on Medium, and he's been working with technology startups for most of his career. He's currently working to change the way that people work and live at WeWork. Artyom will talk about how companies can make small decisions that can have big impacts on the environment. So here he is with Product Design for Sustainability, How Small Decisions Make a Big Difference. And I'm going to hand you presentation. And it looks like you should be good to go. OK. Awesome. Thank you very much, Jen. So I'd like to start with a short story that was told by Leila Giralo in her TED Talk. And the story is about electric kettles. So. 97% of households in the UK own an electric tea kettle, and 65% of them admit to overfilling their kettles. The extra energy that is wasted on a daily basis for boiling unused water is enough to light all the streetlights in the England for a night. But there is another thing that breeds like besides tea, and it's TV. There is a unique, uh, unique phenomenon called the TV pickups that is happening in the UK. The minute popular TV shows or sport games go to a net break, everybody's turning their kettles on at the same time, which destabilizes the supply, demand, and electricity balance, and sometimes means that the UK have to buy nuclear power from France. And it's a great example of how this national scale of our consumption could be prevented by more thoughtful product design. And it's hard to blame consumers. If you go to Amazon and search for an electric kettle, the number one result will be a kettle that has a capacity of water enough for 13 cups of tea. In addition, according to the photos on Amazon, this kettle doesn't have a scale that gives any kind of feedback to the user about how much water is inside. Both of these design decisions encourage overfilling and eventually lead to electricity overconsumption. And it's not knew that design, uh, designers who work on physical products have to be sustainability thoughtful. They have to understand the human production interaction, uh, sorry, the human product interaction, pick eco-friendly materials and think about efficient packaging, efficient transportation. Me and uh, most of people I know are working on digital products, but if you think about it in scale, digital products have a huge environmental impact as well. User experience, user interface, designers, product managers, software engineers, all of these people work on products that shape people's behavior and daily habits. Think about company like Uber. Their core product is, um, sorry. Um, think about company like Uber. Their core product is 100% digital, but daily they operate about 1 million rides across the globe. Uber actually decide how and where 1 million vehicles will go every day. GrabHub operates more than 200,000 food deliveries per day. Think about how much opportunities to reduce waste and not take a friendly transportation they have. Or Amazon. They ship about 3 million packages per day. All of them have to be taken by a plane, a truck, or a bike, or a drone. I had a chance to participate in many product uh, discussions. And uh, during these meetings, people constantly try to understand cons and pros of each solution. They say, this solution will increase engagement or conversion or accessibility or security of our product. But unfortunately, I have never heard any of them using world sustainability. And also, I couldn't find uh, good resources about uh, that are exploring how different features of digital products could affect sustainability. So I decided to do some explorations by myself. I created some concepts of how big scale tech companies could create a positive impact on the environment. I intentionally picked relatively minor changes that even the most junior product manager of these products could implement. Even though these changes are minor, you'll see that they can have a pretty significant impact. You will also see that some of the ideas I suggest will not only make products more sustainable, but also will improve user experience and potential income of the companies behind these products. Um, when working on these uh, concepts, this is the definition of sustainability that I was guided by. Sustainability is an approach to design and development that focuses on environmental, social, and financial factors that are often never addressed. 
So my first example is from macOS, an operating system installed more than 10% uh, of all computers in the world. And here's how Apple can decrease the paper waste by implementing this uh, change. So if I want to print this article from New York Times, macOS will use four sheets of paper. The last page, though, will include just a single line with the copyright credit. The default printing dialog allows to scale down the content manually, but I think it's safe to assume that a very small portion of users will actually invest energy in going to the last page and see how much content it has, and then manually trying to find the right percentage of scaling down to make the last page empty of content. I think in this case, the content should be always automatically scaled down, in this specific case to 98%, to make printing more um, efficient and the pr in this specific example, the printing of the last page unnecessary. It will keep the content almost identical, but save 25% of the paper uh, that is used, used to print this specific article. The next example is from uh, Kayak. Kayak is a flight tickets uh, comparison website, and I try to find a way how they can uh, create a positive impact on the environment. Turns out that most of the fuel that is burned by planes are uh, burned during takeoffs and landings. So let's say you have to fly from Washington DC to Minneapolis, and you have two options. First one, flying direct. The second one, flying with a layover in Chicago. Even though Chicago is on the way from Washington to Minneapolis, by taking this flight, the planes will burn 23% more fuel. And that fuel is equal to 1,000 liter, which is enough to fill a full tank of 20 vehicles. So on Kayak website, in case user gets two major options for his request, uh, direct versus layover, I suggest to display a small educational tag and near direct flights that explain why this option is more eco-friendly. And hopefully that will educate users about the impact of the, their decisions um, and they will prefer direct flights in future. In addition, since the direct flights are more expensive ones, I assume Kayak are actually more interested to sell direct flights since they would get a bigger cut from airlines companies. The next example is from Medium, a publishing platform that I really like. The whole product of Medium is about reading and writing experience. Uh, so I think printing articles from Medium should be an expected user behavior. Unfortunately, if you try to print any article on Medium, you will, for some reason, include one or two blank pages at the end. It seems like just a bug, but Medium would, uh, wouldn't let it happen if they thought about touch points uh, their product has with physical world and prioritize this use case. I reached out to Medium about this bug several months ago, and unfortunately, I didn't receive any response, and I didn't, like, this bug hasn't been fixed yet. The next example is from Uber Eats, but it could be potentially any, any uh, food delivery service. So Uber knows my home address, which means they know when I'm ordering uh, my food to uh, the food to my apartment. And I think that Uber can safely assume that I have a cutlery at home and ask rest restaurants not to send me plastic cutlery in my orders, unless I'm intentionally asked to receive it. It can be achieved by a small toggle in the checkout process. It is unchecked by default, but in case you tap on it, it will enable a uh, cutlery addition. By default, it will suggest the same amount as the amount of meals that were added on the cart. In case user doesn't add cutlery intentionally, a comment, please do not add cutlery, will be automatically added to the order that the restaurant will receive. The next example is for uh, how LinkedIn could decrease CO2 emissions and uh, materials waste. LinkedIn uh, has a product called Jobs, which you might be familiar with. It's basically a marketplace for jobs, and the most sustainable type of jobs, remote jobs, are not there. Jim and uh, Elijah will speak more about remote uh, workforce uh, during this uh, conference, but 
I'll just remind you briefly why remote jobs are more sustainable. They require no commute, they require no office, they allow employees to cook meals at home, which makes them eat healthier and uh, waste less. And according to researchers, uh, remote work makes employees happier and more productive. And remote jobs aren't just some kind of a hipster thing. Uh, corporates like Apple, Dell, IBM, Amazon, Salesforce have thousands of open remote positions. Successful startups like GitHub, Automatic, which is the company behind WordPress, Stack Overflow, Basecamp, Zapier, and Vision, all of them have a completely or partially distributed teams. And remote positions are becoming more and uh, more in demand in the past several years. So by not including remote positions in their product, LinkedIn seems to miss a business opportunity. So a really easy and lean fix that LinkedIn could implement in a couple of days is um, allowing to type remote in the location search field, allowing to filter open position open position search results by remote and tagging remote positions with an appropriate tag. The next example is from eBay and how they can encourage people to reuse. eBay is a marketplace that is based on supply from the seller side and uh, demand from buyer side which means that encouraging people to sell more stuff through their platform would make their business more successful. That's exactly what they could do by, suggest, by suggesting a user to sell his old stuff in case he just purchased something that is supposed to replace it. So this is how I see the purchase uh, confirmation message. In case you bought iPhone 7, eBay could safely assume that it was bought to replace the iPhone 6S you bought um, a year ago and suggest you to sell it. Uh, $1,000 spending seems like a perfect time to suggest you um, to get rid of your old phone and get um, about $400 back. In addition, eBay already have all the item description. So creating an auction for your old iPhone wouldn't be a big deal. And uh, here is another example for eBay and how they could decrease CO2 emissions. So eBay could uh, do that by encouraging users to uh, prefer a ground shipping over an air shipping. CO2 impact made by airplanes is from 10 to 20 times higher than by trucks. So similarly to Kayak, by labeling the more eco-friendly shipping option, eBay could explain their users the environmental consequences of their actions. And the very last example is from Google. When I'm requesting a road from my apartment to the office in the Google Maps app, I always receive the car directions as a primary option. Google knows that I never drive since I don't have a car and even a driver license, but they still for some reason encourage me to get, to get one uh, instead of promoting public transportation for me. In this specific example of my morning uh, commute, it takes 20 minutes to get there with a car and 23 minutes with a bus. It's only three minutes difference, so suggesting public transportation as a primary option could make people prefer a bus over a car. And this kind of behavior, cha this kind of behavior change would um, minimize the CO2 emissions of their commute. In addition, Google choose not to show bike option for cities that don't have enough data about bike lines. In Tel Aviv, where I live, sometimes it's much quicker to commute using a bike instead of a car. So by promoting bike options in Maps application, Google could potentially save people's time and have a positive impact uh, on the environment. And for cities with, without enough information about bike lines, I would suggest to copy their real world behavior. For a bike option, Google could just show a car road, but with a time estimation that would make sense for a bike ride. So these are all concepts I wanted to show you today. Here are some advices I could give to everyone who wants to promote more sustainable digital products. I think that 
the most important thing is to educate yourself about sustainability in general. This way you will be able to understand why and how um, should we improve digital products. Turns out there is a stack exchange on sustainability, which I really recommend. When you build a digital product, um, think where it meets the physical world and what impact would it have if uh, 100,000 or 1 million people would use it tomorrow. Challenge the person you're interviewing for open positions in your company with sustainability questions. And challenge other products to be more sustainable by reporting bugs, opening tickets, and taking um, and taking your time to talk with support teams to demand more sustainable uh, solutions from their products. You can find link to um, some of the materials um, I mentioned here in my article on Medium. Uh, and you can find a link to this article on my Twitter. And that's it. Thank you very much.